from the soul with it. What's going on everybody, The Island Ricks TV back with another video and I would like to talk to y'all about the top NBA draft prospects of the 2019 NBA draft and I want to ask y'all a question, who do y'all think is the final piece to the Lakers young core of the future? Now I ain't gonna lie to y'all, alright? I don't watch college basketball and I've never really been a fan of college basketball, I've just always been a huge NBA fan so I really only hear about college players around draft time and once they're connected to the Los Angeles Lakers and I always study the mock draft just to see who they have the Lakers projected to draft because for the most part they've been very accurate every year I do take the time to do my research if I know the Lakers have a pick and I do believe that I somewhat have the alpha talent and recognizing superstars in the making I just recently did a video on should the Lakers draft Darius Garland the reason I say yes is because I believe he would be the most logical pick due to his great shooting ability and just based on how the NBA landscape is shaped today which suits three-point snipers also the fact that the Lakers <laughs> just sucked from the perimeter last season and that's an area where Darius Garland thrives in and that's one of his strong suits when Jerry West spoke about the Lakers he put an emphasis on how the Lakers on how the three-point shot is so vital in today's game and in other words the Lakers just was awful from from the perimeter and they had nothing but playmakers on the roster last season with LeBron James so to me just just connecting the dots and just analyzing adding another playmaker or adding a player who isn't a great three-point shooter and LeBron James isn't a knockdown three-point shooter and he likes to be surrounded by shooters then the obvious choice would be Darius Garland and Darius Garland is the most ready three-point shooter in the draft projected to be drafted in the top 10 you know I see fans saying we don't need no more point guards I'm like okay the one we have keeps getting injured the past two seasons and everybody is comparing him to Jason Kidd but I just don't see Jason Kidd I'm sorry and and even if he was Jason Kidd, this NBA today doesn't suit players like Jason Kidd. They suit players more like Steph Curry, more like Kyrie Irving, more like Damian Lillard. And I see a lot of y'all in the comment section talking about like, you know, y'all think the Lakers should take Cam Reddish. And I'm like, who? So I'm like, okay, I need to go do my research. So I took the time to do the research on this Reddish dude and I was impressed, but not as impressed as I was with Darius Garland or Jerry Culver, but that's just my opinion. I also did some research on DeAndre Hunter, watched some highlights, and the more research I did on these guys, the more it validated what I said even more in that video about Darius Garland, about how the media is trying to convince us that this draft is just a top three player draft. But honestly, it's a pool full of talent in this draft that we don't know who will become a star in the league one day. Now it's crazy because I did that video about Darius Garland a few days ago, but before I did that video, all the mock drafts I seen had the Lakers drafting DeAndre Hunter. Now as of late, I've been seeing mock drafts stating that they have the Lakers taking Darius Garland, which means Lonzo Ball could be traded. But however, LeBron James is high TV ratings and LeVar Ball and Lonzo Ball is high TV ratings. So there's a high chance that the Lakers may keep Lonzo because they want to continue this big reality TV show that they have and, you know, keep putting up these smoke and mirrors to distract us of the fact that the Lakers have been sucking period so who would be the lakers final piece of the young core if these guys aren't traded for anthony davis first let's talk about jared culver jared culver is 6'5 195 pounds he averaged 18 points per game six rebounds per game and three assists per game he shot 46 percent from the field and 30 percent from three not only do i like culver's game but i love his high level of confidence he has that superstar attitude and appeal that is just built for hollywood in the city of los angeles even though i've criticized kuzma in the past cal kuzma isn't athletic or isn't as quick on his feet so i talked about those deficiencies and i've seen a couple of his his boyfriends slash fans get upset with the fact that i said that but that's cool you know the main thing about cal kuzma though that stands out to me that i do like is his ultra confidence he's competitive and he shows effort on defense and he just continues to fire shots relentlessly and that's what i like most about kuz and Kobe. Over, I felt like they embodied that Jared Culver he referred to himself as an elite two-way player I watched his highlights and I see a little bit of Jimmy Butler resemblance I'm not sure if he modeled his game after Jimmy Butler but that's who I see a little bit and I think if the Lakers plan on keeping Lonzo Ball going with Culver
Clover is the best option. Lonzo is a really good defender with long arms. And I think Ball, Culver, Ingram just switching off screens and guarding on Ball would just be great for the Lakers' future. Next up, we have DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter is listed at 6'7", 225 pounds. He averaged 15 points per game, 5 rebounds per game, 2 assists. He shot 52% from the field and shot 43% from the 3. Now, keep in mind that just because you see someone shoot 43% doesn't mean they're really efficient. You know, Hunter didn't take many threes, but he is a great mid-range shooter. Now, compared to Culver, from what I see, Hunter is the better defender, in my opinion, because you can see he prides himself on stopping you on defense, which is rare nowadays, especially in this soft generation. You don't see too many players priding themselves on defense. I think that Hunter is not flashy. His approach is almost comparable to a Kawhi Leonard, just based off perception. Like, he comes to handle his business, then go home. That's the perception, the vibe I get from him. <laughs> him and Lonzo defense in the future? Them together on defense would be an absolute nightmare because Hunter, to me, is really an elite defender. Now, you heard Culver say he was an elite defender, but this guy right here doesn't have to say it because, to me, he seems like a step above Culver in terms of defense. He's a great free throw shooter. I think Hunter, in my opinion, would be what you call a safe pick. If you're scared to take a risk on any other player and you too unsure, uncertain that the player can translate their game to the elite level, so you just take Hunter because you already know what he brings to the table on defense. He spent two years in college just like Culver, which is also a bonus. But the only issue with taking Hunter is if you draft him, he will need minutes to develop. So you have to put him in the lineup. And we don't know if he's a knockdown three-point shooter. If you put him in the lineup with Lonzo, Ingram, Kuzma, and LeBron, who's going to hit the shots? LeBron needs to be surrounded by shooters. So how do you spread the floor? And I know a lot of y'all out there like, you know, we can't cater to LeBron, but we're stuck with him for the next three years. And he's not going to be able to carry this team. And he has to be able to be LeBron, but these guys have to develop as well. So next up, we have Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish is listed at 6'5", 218 pounds he averaged 13 points per game 3.7 rebounds per game and 1.9 assists per game he shot 35 percent from the field 33 percent from the three and 77 percent from the field now i watched cam's highlight and i'm gonna be honest with you guys like the way y'all hyped him up in that comment section my expectations were through the roof for this guy but when i watched his highlights i was expecting to see like a mj kobe Bryant, or somebody on that level but i wasn't blown away and i think cam is a solid player i seen some nba comparison it compared him to like rudy gay but i didn't see rudy gay i see more of a michael red or a oj mayo and he can finish well at the rim he can shoot well you know he has solid defense but this is just my opinion if i was the lakers gm personally personally i wouldn't draft reddish and that's not to say that he won't be a great nba player but i just don't see what y'all see in him and maybe i'm wrong and i could be and i've been wrong before but I would just pass. But next up, and last but not least, we have Darius Garland. Darius Garland is 6'2", 175 pounds. He averaged 16 points per game, three rebounds per game, 2.6 assists per game. He shot 53% from the field and shot 47% from the three and 75% from the free throw line. Now clearly, clearly, Darius Garland game fits today's game the most of the most out of any player in the draft and in my opinion as I stated it would be very risky taking Garland due to his injury and size it's a similar situation to Kyrie Irving coming out of Duke not playing a full season even though Darius Garland played fewer games and like I stated in the video I compared him to Jeff T which isn't a very high seller if you're looking for him to be a superstar but honestly I think he could oversee those expectations this may sound crazy honestly I think that Garland is the best player in the draft just based on today's game, based on the way today's game is played. Zion Williamson is the most popular player in the draft with the highest ceiling. But to me, Darius Garland, ball handling skills, his ability to make three-point shots, and just the way the game is played today, I think he's the best player available. But again, it's taking a huge risk that me personally, I would take. Just That's just me. Typically, players who fathers were average NBA players or slightly above average players or was on the verge of being great most often their sons are better than them and they have something to prove i.e steph curry kobe bryant clay thompson etc to me that would be another reason why i would draft darius garland so who do i think is the final piece of the young core 
if the Lakers were planning on building a future super team in a future dynasty. So I would have to say Jerry Culver. But the only issue is the Lakers having LeBron. Okay. He talked all that. You better be ready to prove that you're elite. But me personally, if I really felt that the Lakers aren't confident about signing the top free agent because that means you're coming back with the same roster as last season. And I don't care what y'all talking about. We was a fourth seed and all these injuries. I genuinely hate those narratives. I hate those narratives and those excuses because I don't know if y'all was watching all the games I watched just about every single game this season and most of the teams to his top seeds in December and in the beginning of the season they didn't even make the playoffs the Rockets were the 11th seed at one point in the beginning of the season and look where they finished at so where you at in the beginning means absolutely nothing and stop the narrative about the injuries because that's bogus as well because when we were healthy we still lost to some of the worst teams and struggled closing out a lot of games. So if you have just about the same roster next season, I don't see us being that much better. And you're banking on a 36-year-old LeBron to be healthy again, to try to be healthy this season, try to carry this young team to the playoffs. So I just think the smart move, in my opinion, would be to draft Darius Garland and trade Lonzo Ball, possibly sign a J.J. Redick or a Danny Green, go after Marcus Morris and a center. You know, just beef up your bench. That way, if you don't sign a top free agent, you have a point guard whose game resembles the point guards of today, which Alonzo Ball doesn't. Then you can build from there. But that's just my opinion. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all get in that comment box, like, share, subscribe. I'm out.